Hey everybody, my name is Tam Nguyen. I'm a tutor here at Chegg. I'm a, I mainly teach math and a little bit of computer science. And today is going to be one of those computer science days because we're going to be talking about bubble sort. Um, so bubble sort is simply a way of sorting an array of numbers. Um, it's one of the most easy ways to sort, but also it's one of the most ineffective ways to, uh, to sort. We're going to see why in a little bit. Over to the side, I've written um, some very, very simple pseudocode um, that goes through the process of a bubble sort. Let's go ahead and uh, hand trace this pseudocode. And we'll see what the bubble sort does. It'll be very, uh, very obvious once we go through it. Um, so let's say we have a, a list of numbers, a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, all the way to a sub n. Okay, and we have that here. I have a list of random numbers. And um, n in this case is going to equal 5. Okay. And also n has to be greater than 2, right? There's no need to sort. Uh, there's no need to sort a list of just one number. It's just going to be itself. So um, we see that we have nested loops. We have a for loop inside of another for loop. Okay. And let's see what it does. We have i is equal to 1. i is going to start at 1. Uh, it's going to stop at n minus 1, okay? So it's going to stop at um, at 4, right? Because n is 5. I'm going to write that here. Stops at 4. Or I should probably write when i equals 4. Okay. And then it runs another loop inside of that. It sets j equal to 1, and then it stops at n minus i this time. Okay, so um, it's dependent on the first loop. And then it says, if a sub j is greater than a sub j plus 1, then go ahead and swap the two numbers. So essentially, if um, the number to the right is less than, then swap it. Alright, let's run through the loop. I'm going to set i is equal to 1. Okay, so i is 1 now. Okay, j is also 1. Okay, j is also going to stop at 4. However, only for this, uh, only for this first iteration, because we have uh, 5 minus i. i is still 1. So, a sub j, if it is greater than a sub j plus 1, or the next number, swap them. It is, so we're going to go ahead and swap them. 1, 6, 12, 3, 10. Okay, and then it goes back to this for loop. All right, it doesn't go to this one yet, it goes to this one. So then j becomes 2. My bad. j becomes 2. I swap these two. Now I'm checking a sub j and a sub j plus 1. So a sub 2 and a sub 3. Um, is this one greater than this one? No. Then we don't do anything to the list. We keep it as is. Alright. And I'm just writing it uh, down again just to, just to make sure it's very clear. And then we're going to go back to this loop, the nested one, j is now 3. Now we compare these two. Is this one greater than this one? Yes. Now we swap them. It does it one more time. j is 4. It compares 12 and 10, and it sees that it does need to be swapped. Oh, that's not right. Oh, that should be an eraser. Okay. Now, we see that um, J is now 5, right? Because we up the counter. Um, actually, it's going to... It's going to stay at 4. But once it's at 4, it stops. Alright? The inner loop stops. Then we go to the 
outer loop again. So now instead of i being 2, or instead of i being 1, it's going to be 2. Okay, so all of that, all of this here, was the first iteration. It was this here. All right, it didn't go past that. I was still 1. And now we're going to go on to I is 2. So it's going to do the same thing. It's going to check if it needs swapping. Um, same exact procedure, however, it's, this time it's going to be um, J is going to stop at N minus I. I is 2, remember, so it's going to stop um, right here. It's going to check to here and then stop, which makes sense because we know that this one is already correct, right? So there's no need to check that one again. Um, let me just double check. Let's uh, run through this. J is I. Okay, I is 2. Okay, N is 5. So it stops at. Um, actually, it stops at 3 here. Good thing I double checked that. Okay, so now we're going to run through the process again. It's going to check 1 and 6. It's going to see that nothing needs to be changed. And then it's going to check um, 6 and 3. It needs a swap. It swaps it. Alright, and then technically, technically the loop would keep on going. All right, but nothing's going to change because everything is in the right order. Alright, so uh, there needs to be a way for the program to know when to stop if you want to save time. However, um, you can leave it as is. It would just run the loop um, an unnecessary amount of times. It would actually run 2 to the n times, where n is your amount, the amount of elements you have. So in this case, it would run uh, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32 times. All right. Um, but nothing will happen to the list. It will stay exactly the same. You'll get the same amount, or the same list every single time. And the cool part, or the interesting part, I think, about bubble sort is um, the, the reason it's named. It's named after, um, imagine if you had bubbles of different density, like, let's say you had a little lava lamp or something. And that's going to be my lava lamp. And you had bubbles of different densities, all right? And the, so the densest bubble is going to float all the way down, and it's going to push aside all the little bubbles and all the little bubbles are going to float all the way to the top all right so imagine a lava lamp and the little globs of oil floating and that's essentially what's happening in a bubble sort you see we have um, a big number we start with six and it slowly it pushes all the little numbers away until it's uh, where it needs to be and we have the number 12 the biggest number and it pushes its way all the way to the back of the list um, so that's that's kind of interesting why it's named. It's also an, uh, a very easy way to remember uh, which sorting method is which, because uh, you know there's different ways to sort: um, selection sort, insertion sort, bubble sort, and sometimes it's hard to remember which one is which. And that's a really good way to remember it. All right. My name is Tam Win. This was a lesson on bubble sort. Uh, thank you guys for watching.